My guest today is the voice and creator of the very popular Daily Audio Bible podcast that has been downloaded, get this, over 100 million times since 2006. He's a music producer, photographer, and author of this new book, Sneezing Jesus, How God Redeems Our Humanity. Welcome back, Brian. Thank you, it's good to be back always. I love this book and I'm gonna start off by reading a little excerpt from it because I think this sets it up really well. Jesus loved us enough to saddle himself with indigestion and urination and all manner of humanness. He laughed with a human voice and saw through human eyes in order to be Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus sneezed. Yeah. Now, that's where we start off this amazing journey through Jesus's life. Tell me why you wanted to really highlight Jesus's humanity. Well, I mean, I, th I think it's Jesus' humanity that we find to be the most compelling thing about him. It's, mm -hmm. it's the connection point that we have to him is through his humanity. And so, I mean, the, la the last book that I wrote was really exploring a relationship with God, which led me naturally to who is this that we're talking about that I'm in a relationship with? And obviously that's Jesus. And I've read the Gospels, you know, dozens and dozens of times and just began to understand the back story of what Jesus was doing and what his humanity was saying. And I realized, you know, Jesus is more than just, um, like I say in the book, the cream we buy every day to apply to get rid of our sin rash. Mm. He was showing us what uh, humanity was created to look like and be like in this world. And so the deeper that I got into Jesus in the gospels, the more I realized this is, this is what my life is supposed to be. This is not just what I'm supposed to aspire to. This is what my life is supposed to be in this world. And uh, so, uh, you know, it just going from there led me into the story of sneezing Jesus. And I want to hone in on that, what our life is supposed to look like. That's essentially what Jesus wanted us to see in his life as he walked on this very earth, is what, our, what potential we have mm -hmm. as human beings. Explain that. Well, I mean, if we consider what humanity was supposed to be in the first place, we'd have to go back to the beginning in the book of Genesis when we have humanity intertwined with God in a perfect state of shalom, where there is no sin, and, uh, and that got all blown apart, as we know. Jesus was the first person to walk on planet Earth without sin as a human being since then. And so uh, I began to realize Jesus is what normal humanity is supposed to be. Mm. And that shows me just how far I've fallen and so Jesus isn't something just to aspire to. He's really something to become. And so when we talk about becoming Christ-like, we're not talking about an aspiration or some kind of inspiration. We're talking about a reality, a way that we're supposed to live. And that's what the cross, that's what the work of Christ, his death and burial and resurrection and ascension offer us, is this reintegration it's Christ within us, so right, the divine within our humanity in this world, just like Jesus. That's what it's supposed to be for us. And I love how you mention in Sneezing Jesus the fact that I think as Christians especially, we focus on the eternity. We focus on that day when we will be with Jesus in heaven, but we don't realize that eternity starts now. Our life is now and it counts. Right. How important is it that we focus on the fact that every choice that we make, and that's what we see through Jesus' life, every choice that we make makes a difference and means something? Absolutely. I mean, I grew up thinking that eternity begins at the point of my death. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just have to figure out how to get to my death, kind of behaving, so that I can enter into eternity. But e eternity is a term that is measuring something that can't be measured. It's a bottomless expanse of time that can't be measured. And right now happens to be included in that space of time. So we don't have a point at which eternity begins. Eternity has no beginning or ending. We're, we're in it now. And so everything does matter. 
everything that we do does matter. Every choice is writing the story of our lives. And is that a story of becoming more and more Christ-like, more and more sanctified? Or is that a story of uh, you know, us trying to, to use the knowledge of good and evil to figure God out? Are we walking with God? Are we trying to figure Him out? Every choice matters. We're in eternity already. Mm. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, Brian will share with us what he learned about loving your neighbor in the middle of the desert when his car got stuck in the mud. Stay with us. <laughs> 